Hello, good morning and good afternoon to all of y'all out there. Today we're talking about the War of Art. I believe this is like week five or six. We've got Zandra here. She's um, very happy that I did the go live notification. So thank you for um, utilizing that. And uh, I will do my best to continue using that in the future. Um, so Zandra's, Zandra's here. It looks like Kim might be here. So welcome you guys. I hope you had a really good day and a very creative week. Um, and hopefully y'all got to read through. Um, if you are just tuning in and you don't have the book, don't worry. We're just going to be talking about some things and you can easily follow along. Um, it is helpful to have the book and I always do recommend buying the books that we go through um, in our creative book club here just because we want to support this artist and it helps for you to read it beforehand so that we can have a discussion uh, which makes it really fun because sometimes there's some things that we don't necessarily agree with or maybe we don't understand like I know this week there is a portion in here that like I didn't really quite comprehend, but we're gonna put it out on the discussion table and hopefully some of you guys that are following along will chime in and maybe enlighten me. So we went through pages 82 all the way to page eight, uh, 101. And it's very short, very quick read, but uh, yeah, so behind me you'll see this is a commission painting I've been working on. I'm really excited, very charged up. I need to fix this center portion here and put in some Celtic knots in the corners. And this bad boy is going to go to its home. This is a commission I've been working on. I'm very excited. I'll just go ahead and show you this so that some of you guys can tune back in. I've been using some gold paint, which kind of has a really cool effect on the hills you can kind of see in there. And I just like mapped in my Celtic knot work and um, this is supposed to be a teleportation stone and it's kind of coming in and out itself. You can see it's kind of semi-transparent, but I'm gonna go ahead and doctor that up a bit and finish the corners and this bad boy is gonna go home. So very excited. All right, well, you guys aren't chatting in there like normal, so we'll just get going. I know maybe Zandra has tuned in and walked away, but so we're talking about resistance and how we can overcome our in own internal battles with our artwork and how we can actually use tricks to force ourselves to do things. Um, I like to call them mind hacks. And a lot of times it helps me to really just have a support group, which is kind of what we formed here with our book club. And we can cheer each other on. If you're interested in joining our support group, you should go to uh, Creative Club on Facebook. So it's Creative Club with Sari Luna on Facebook. And it's a place where you can go and share all of your good stuff. Oh, so we've got Kim here. Hi, Kim. Welcome. Zandra. Oh, thank you, Zandra. Yeah, I wanted to wear my my pretty velour today. I got this at a secondhand store and I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty cozy. So festive, festive, happy November. Ugh, a professional is prepared. Are you guys prepared? Did you read the book this week? Are you a professional? I, of course, have my art business, but I like these. I like going through these because then it's repetition, repetition. I can get these tricks and these hacks in my mind and I can actually pinpoint some things that would really help me in my career. So Zondra says, I meant the painting, but that shirt is dope. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Zondra. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm pretty excited to finish that. It, I'm just, you know, been working on it, you know, here. Okay, so Zandra says, wait, it matches that dress I wore at Deso. We twinsies. Yeah, girl. Next time I see you, we'll have to put our gold velour on and have a reunion. <laughs> Maybe have a dance party outside or something. <laughs> mm, all right, guys. So a professional is prepared. I'm doing my best to be more and more professional every day. How are you? How about you guys? Give me a word out there if you're trying to be professional. So 
professionals prepared each day to confront his own self-sabotage. Zandra's out there. She says, I'm in. Word. Right. So it's mind hacks. Like most, of, like I was actually reflecting on this this morning. Most of the trouble that I have doing a task is that energy that I need just to get started. Once I've started doing the task, it's a little bit like rolling a rock down the hill. You really can't stop it. I just want to keep going. So give me a word if that's you. I know it's uh, the, the most difficult part of doing something is that initial first action. So resistance is, a, is fertile. It will throw stuff at you that you've never seen before. Sorry, I underlined certain parts of this. So we're talking about preparing ourselves mentally so that it gives you a little bit of a shock absorber, right? Like if you expect the feeling to come, then you're going to be a little bit more prepared to be objective about it when it does come. So take what the day gives you. Be prudent and prepared to be reckless. Go for the throat when you can. Go for that jugular. And you know that every single day your workspace or your mood may change and be varied. So the goal is not victory because success is going to come by itself when you want to, right? Like, so that, that goes back to our conversations previously about synchronicity, how all you have to do is set your mind to something and like all of a sudden stuff starts popping up that matches what your mindset is. There's been time and time again with my art goals that I set a goal and then all of a sudden through, like of course I'm doing work and I'm getting my name out there and I'm being diligent, but synchronicity is when it's just like you just set your mind to doing something and you get out there and you do it and like it's meeting a neighbor who has an opportunity or an art colleague who reminds you about something and refers you to an opportunity. So everything is planting that seed, right? You got to plant that seed for that growth later. So Kim says, I decided to grow up and leave amateur, <laughs> amateur world behind and be professional. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Yes, Kim, I, I dare say you are one of the more professional artists that I know. So the fact that you are throwing away being amateur and rededicating yourself to being professional is really inspiring to me. And I'm looking forward to walking on this journey with you because... I think we could all stand to be a little bit more dedicated to our craft. Um, I, I know some amazing artists and really dedicated people who, who um, they dedicate their lives to themselves, right? Like, so what are your goals? We need to make sure that we're prioritizing that. And I know it's really easy to let things get in the way. And, um, you know, I want to go have fun or, oh, my friend this or, oh, my friend that. But making sure you take care of yourself and your your goals first. So I'm totally with you on that, Kim. I'm, I'm going to join you. <laughs> Let's be professional. <laughs> Uh, so success is going to come when it wants to, but your goal isn't victory, right? It's to handle yourself, your insides, I'm assuming your internal emotions, and be as sturdy and as steady as you can. Keep, it's just like we are talking about last week, like clocking in at work. Like you show up whether you feel like it or not because you know you want that paycheck, right? Like so you show up whether you feel like it or not, whether you're tired or not, because you know you need to get that, that experience and clocking in and getting through the monotony of just showing up so that your inspiration, because you're carving out that time so that your inspiration can show up. All right, so a professional does not show off. Professional's work has style and it is distinctly his own. His style serves the material. He does not impose it as a means of drawing attention to himself. So it doesn't mean you throw down, you don't throw down an awesome thing once in a while just to let the boys know you're still in business, but you're just showing up, you're doing that work, you're being steadfast, you're being true to your style and yourself. Um, and there's time and time again where I look at other people's artwork and I say to myself, oh, wow, I wish I could do that. Or, oh, I could do that. Um, and it is fun to emulate 
uh, other people's style as an exercise, as long as you're not plagiarizing their work. Um, and I think that if you don't already have your style, it would serve you to do a set of exercises where you take artwork that you enjoy and you try and break it down and recreate it. You kind of reverse engineer it. And this will really help you learn new techniques. And what you can do with those new techniques is pick your favorite ones out and incorporate it in your own style. So techniques can be applied to different subject matter and things like that. So there's my tangent on developing your style. I do have more information on that and I even have a video of it, but um, yeah. So don't show off, just show up, do your work and be consistent. So like a lot of times when I'm working on artwork, I'm like, okay, this is cool and all, but like, I'm really over it. I've been looking at this piece of artwork for a month. So for me, I'm just like, I keep wanting to make it better, 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 better. Um, but then sometimes I just get lost in my artist land, my artist mind. And I think, I get on that perpetual hamster wheel of wanting to make it better. Um, and so I think half the project, half the job is knowing when to stop. Um, just because just because I'm sick of looking at something or I want to make something better doesn't necessarily mean that I need to continue on with it. So it's knowing when to pull that plug, knowing when to stop. Zondra says, I also like the idea of not letting your own style take over the art. There are artists that she's hugely a fan of, but sometimes they're so committed to brand that it gets in the way of work, of the work. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. Um, I would love to know of some examples that you have of that. Um, I'm not necessarily going to um, show the examples on here just because I don't want to do art critique on my channel. Um, but if what I'm understanding, it, it might, let's see. So I like the idea of not letting your own style take over the art. There are artists I'm hugely a fan of, but sometimes they're so committed to brand it gets in the way of the work. Yeah, I can see that. I'm not going to speak any more to this topic um, because, again, like I said, I'm not trying to be an art critique. Um, but I understand what you're saying, and I personally can think of some pieces of artwork that I felt that way about, um, but I'm not really going to speak on that anymore. Um, but yeah, no, I understand what you're saying, and I think that all of us can can really think about that and, and digest that and utilize that for our own work. Um, so yeah, yeah, thank you for that, Zandra. Yeah. So again, just to circle what Zandra said back into this is a professional doesn't show off. So what we're discussing here is um, not letting your, your style take over. So a professional's work has style. It's distinctly his own. So I think what we're speaking to here is that we can be kind of subtle um, and let it just flow naturally. Like if you're overthinking something, um, I think what Zondra's talking about is um, you can overcompensate, right? You can be so obsessed with your brand that you tend to overcompensate and over apply the technique in a way that can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, and I think that that might come back to um, some graphic design rules where with graphic design, especially iconography and things like that, the simpler the form, the better. Um, and maybe we can take that with our, with our artwork too. I know my artwork gets really complicated. I tend to put a lot of things in it. And um, maybe I can take that as a note to just really like, like I'm looking at my art and I was looking at my art this weekend and I was talking with a friend and I said, you know, I'm just ready to take all my art off the walls and start fresh because I know I can do better now. Like some of my artwork on my walls is from like two years ago. Some of it's from even three years ago. And I've just progressed so much. Um, this one behind me is super detailed, but I worked pretty hard on the design and I'm working on 
the lighting and things. Um, so, so this is a little bit of an experiment as most of my new stuff is, but I definitely see as I'm looking at my walls here that, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm looking at this one right here and this is one of my favorite paintings I've ever done. And I think I did overcompensate with some of it, like my shadowing. I don't know. I think I'm getting your point and I think I've made my point. So Kim says, <laughs> the cat is typing on her keyboard. Her style is not for everyone, but she makes art for all people, especially commission work. It's their vision. Exactly. Yeah. And this one behind me is a commission too. And we need to, again, like make sure like Kim, I know we've talked about this before. Like when you're doing a piece of artwork for your client, as I think you're pointing out right here, that when you do a work for your client, that it's their vision. And um, when people are paying us, then we, we will, of course, put our own spin on the work, but we will also make room for what they want as they're the ones paying us. And we want them to be happy. So yeah, thank you for that. I don't know, Zondra, I think I, I think I was able to circle back to your comment and um, talk, touch on it a little bit more, um, just using myself as an example. So I hope that's kind of what you meant. So Zondra says it's more that I'm into detail, which makes sense, but you had a painting, but if you had a painting that was perfect and didn't have as much detail and you were like, no detail is my jam and put detail not needed. Okay. So it's, it's sacrificing the end product for the sake of this is what I always do. I'm going to do it this way is I believe what Zondra's saying. Yeah. I think we touched on it. I think we got it. Yeah, it was a good little good little ramble talk. Okay, so Zandra's in the chat and she says exactly bingo. Okay, perfect. So I'm glad I understand what you're saying and it sounds like I was able to tap, tap into that. Um, so good, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so like a lot of times too, like that can be said like um, when you are working on uh, when you are working on developing your style, you are probably going to do what we were just talking about with Zandra, which is overcompensate or over apply. So like, it's like, um, um, an overcorrection, right? So, so you are trying to find that sweet spot, that middle ground. And then, as you're developing new techniques and you're playing with them and applying them, you can apply them to situations or things in such an extreme manner that it kind of takes detracts from it. Whereas if you were to meet somewhere in the middle, it would enhance it, right? So when you're developing your style, you're probably going to find an up and down until you even out in the middle and then you apply it all. So... Zondra saying that that was a much better way to say it. And she says, yes, an overcorrection. That's a good way to say it too. Perfect. So yeah, I think, uh, yeah, good. Okay. Well, I'm glad I understood that. And I'm glad we we're able to articulate that because that was kind of a page to where, you know, it was a little bit like, okay, like, so it's nice to break that down because just reading that on my own was a little bit like, eh, I don't, I didn't quite get the impact of it, so thank you. All right. A professional dedicates himself to mastering the technique. So he respects his craft. He recognizes that the contributions of those have, who have gone before him, and he apprentices himself to them. There's always something to learn. There's always something to learn by studying somebody else's art. And again, I'm not saying plagiarize their art. I'm saying if you can look at it and reverse engineer it and find out what you find that you like about it and you can maybe learn a technique or two that you can meld in with yours, that would be good. So techniques are awesome because a lot of people want to protect their techniques and not share them, which is, that's your prerogative. That's fine. But oftentimes, some techniques, you can just look at something and the more practice you get, you can reverse engineer it. And that helps also to unlock 
certain pathways in your brain that helps you kind of con make connections with things. So everything that you can do with your brain, like a brain game, um, everything you can do to learn techniques from other artists is really powerful and is really going to boost you. And it all compounds over time. So, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. So mastering technique is so that you can be in uh, the possession of a full arsenal of skills, right? So once you have all the skills, you know, you're toiling beside the front door of technique and then you leave room for genius to enter by the back. I really like how he worded that. So toiling beside the front door of technique leaves room for genius to enter by the back. And of course that genius is just gonna be your, your um, application of it, right? So it, what's really cool, uh, let's, let's circle back here. So like a lot of new like scientific discoveries are made by college students doing studies or people in their masters, um, you know, writing their, their papers. Um, and what's interesting about this is it's just fresh perspective, right? And it's this base knowledge of everything that's gone before you and your unique perspective, right? So you can have the base knowledge of all the techniques, but pairing that with your unique perspective is going to really enable you to find something new, find your, find your niche. All right. Zondra says, post-it notes were made by accident. It was supposed to be super glue. <laughs> I think I heard a story in a story like that about the post-it notes before. I love post-it notes. Um, you guys saw my post-it note wall last week. Um, and actually, um, I don't think I'm, I'm glad they didn't make post-it notes, the super glue, because my post-it notes are now falling off of my wall. So I really need to take the time to make that digital before it falls apart. So uh, Zondra says the best backdoor miracle ever. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> All right. So professional does not hesitate to ask for help. So we've got a bunch of golf analogies in here because Mr. Pressfield loves golf. Um, Zondra's laughing in the chat. <laughs> teener, teener, teener. We're five, you know, 10 year old middle school kids around here. It's fine. So we've got a Tiger Woods analogy talking about golf. Um, so he's saying that Tiger Woods really enjoys learning more about the game that he loves. And um, he has, he works with Butch Harmon, who is his teacher, apparently another golfer. Um, and that he seeks out most, the most knowledgeable teacher and he listens with both ears. And the levels of revelation that can unfold in golf, as in any art, are inexhaustible. Which I really like because... Um, you hear a lot of quotes about people saying originality is dead, nothing is new anymore. And while that may be true to a certain degree, um, also refer back to my scientific discovery analogy to where a lot of the newer discoveries are from the people with the base knowledge who have a fresh perspective. So I I think that it's really impossible to say that there's no actual new originality. Um, I think that that reference, uh, I think that, that quote was discussing um, like movies um, or literature, uh, but I don't know. We'll leave that to the philosophers and I'll just walk away from that one right now. Um, so professional distances herself from her instrument. Would that be a paintbrush for me? So the whole point of this page is to be objective, right? You need to distance yourself. That distance allows you to have a wider perspective. That's why when we're painting, we step back from our painting periodically, uh, at least six feet, and we look at it from afar to make sure that when our faces are so crammed into our painting or whatever it is our work, our writing, whatever, you need to look at it from afar that you get that perspective because you're not gonna look at the painting from three inches from it. You're gonna look at it from six feet away, five feet away, you know? So it's really important that when you're hammering, hammering away on those important little details that you so are obsessing about, 
that we really pull back, see the broader picture and make those big impactful changes. And we do that detail work last and we're selective about it. Um, again, I, I get hyper-focused on this. This is why I am talking about this because this is something that I have to really think about and take a look at. And sometimes I just have to acknowledge, okay, I'm being really obsessive right now and I have a couple hours to spare. So I'm just going to do all this detail work. I don't really care. I know I'm being OCD, but here we go. So it just depends on, you know, what you want, but be objective about it. You know, if you are going to be doing things that, um, are maybe, um, just for you personally, rather than for, the whole composition as a whole. Like sometimes you just really want to like hammer out detail work and sometimes it's just what your little heart needs. So be objective. So your person, your body, your voice, your talent, the physical, mental, emotional, and psychological being that you use in your work really needs to be removed from your instrument. And what does this mean? So he gives us a, a Madonna analogy. He says, <laughs> The professional identifies with her consciousness and her will, not with the matter that her consciousness and will manipulate to serve her art. Does Madonna walk around the house in cone bras and come fuck me bustiers? She's busy planning D-Day. Madonna does not identify with Madonna. Madonna employs Madonna. So stand back. What is the full scope of the project? Employ your technique and your vessel. So Zandra's in the chat, she says she really likes the Madonna analogy. I do too, because it's it's like, you know, the way in which I present myself at shows, the way in which I present myself um, professionally, it might not be the way in which I do my work, right? So when I do my work, I'm not necessarily focused on what I'm looking at, or what I'm appearing to be I'm focused on the work itself right so I think that's a little bit about um allowing yourself to to just do the work I don't know um any comments you guys I know Zandra you like the Madonna analogy so so a professional does not take failure or success personally I really really like this um if you're working in the our industry as a professional, this is so important and it is one of the most important things you can learn, almost as important as your artwork itself, is to take constructive criticism, to take direction from your art director, to take direction from your client, and to be professional and not take it personally. There's always room to grow, remember. So, an artist has a thick skin. He has seated his professional consciousness in a place other than his personal ego. And this I really liked. Evolution has programmed us to feel rejection in our guts. This is how the tribe enforced obedience by wielding the threat of expulsion. And this is actually true. Um, in nomadic societies today, you can still find this. And even in our Western culture today, if you study psychology, sociology, anything like that, it's really interesting because you, you think about it, we're kind of like pack animals. We have our groups of people, we have our family. Some people, it's a nucleus family, which is your mom, father, siblings, whatever. Um, other people, it's like your entire like extended family, aunts and uncles, aunties. Um, so that actual shame, shame is a tool that society uses to force you into doing something um, or to force you into conforming with a structure that's upheld. So I really like psychology and things, if you can tell. So Evolution has programmed us to feel rejection in our guts. This is how the tribe enforced obedience by wielding the threat of expulsion. Fear of rejection isn't just psychological, it's biological and it's in ourselves. We have Zandra out there. She's saying it's so true. She's asking Kim if she's in North Carolina. I know we keep asking Kim where she's at. I believe it's North Carolina. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of everyone. I don't know. Let's see. So the professional cannot take rejection personally because to do so reinforces resistance. Kim saying, yes, she's in North Carolina. All right. So the professional cannot take rejection personally because to do so reinforces resistance. Right. So if you if you take a like a criticism about your art, like um, so let's say like, OK, so this middle part right here, I'm going to make a little bit um, 
I'm going to, I'm going to enhance. So let's say somebody tells me, Sari, you need to do such and such with this middle part. I can either take the information and make my work better, or I can take the information and be upset that I didn't do it on my own and someone had to point it out and I'm so embarrassed, blah, 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 blah. Right. So we can step back from it and just say, okay, like how can I use this information? Right. So fear of rejection can paralyze us and prevent us from doing our work. And then it can prevent us from exposing it to the public. The professional cannot take rejection personally because to do so reinforces resistance. The battle is inside your head. Stand apart from your performance, even as you give it your heart and soul. The work is not you. There's all like, so I finish a piece or I'm halfway done with a piece. I'm already ready for the next piece. Like I'm already, this is old hat. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I, I want to move on. I want to try the next thing. I want to do the next thing. So I'm not my work. My work is a part of me, but I myself continue to grow and expand and, and, and learn, right? So wherever your work fall, falls short, you're going to improve it. Wherever it triumphed, you can make it better still. And again, this is talking about future projects. I'm not talking about going back and fiddling with old projects and never making anything new because, again, quantity, not quant quality, right? Especially as you're growing. So... The professional gives an ear to criticism, seeking to learn and grow. So your resolution before all others needs to be, no matter what, I will never let resistance beat me. Because you know what? If you give up on your craft now, in five years, you could have gained so, so much, so much skill. But in five years, and if you don't touch your craft from now to five years, all you're going to have is regret, right? So Zandra saying that though she had a tough childhood, she was grateful for it. And having a mom um, treat her poorly gave her the understanding that, oh, the things she said seldom have to do with me. Okay, so I really like this as an example, right? So you can take your, your experience and it can be negative. But if you were able to take some knowledge or skill from that negative experience, we can then, though it was still negative and it doesn't discredit the hurt and, and all that, um, that negative experience has taught you something that you can utilize to grow and be stronger now. And I love that you're doing this, Sandra. You're, you're talking about real issues and and being grateful for it, I, I really like that you you were able to to do that. And Zondra's in the chat saying exactly. So yeah, and it's like um like with any relationship, whether it be a mother, a father, a employer, a boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, um, if you can learn from that experience, it wasn't for naught, right? Good for fighting resistance, Zondra says. Yeah, I'm proud of you. That's really good. And then Kim says, our past makes us the wonderful people we are today. Rough times build us to be strong people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, it, you can set that example for everyone around you. Like, like um, I've really transitioned into being generally a happy person every single day. Like, I want every single day to be happy. Like, you know, this is my life and I get to shape my experience, right? So, you know, contrast that with maybe some experiences I had in the past, like I, I, you know, have, have transitioned slowly up, up into a more positive emotional place on the day to day. Right. And, um, I don't know, I don't really know where I'm going with that. Um, we're talking about being strong people, right. From our rough times. So learning and, and even, um, finding mentors and people that will help us to learn the, the uh, what do you call the moral of the story. So, so I've, had, I've been lucky enough to have enough people around me that have been able to uh, help me decipher the meanings to some of my life lessons, right? So uh, whether it be on your own or with somebody else, no shame, just keep fighting that resistance. Show up every day and make it your best day, right? 
Love it. All right, so a professional endures adversity. Let's see, we've got a big analogy here. It's talking about how a professional cannot let himself take humiliation personally. Oh, this is a good one. Humiliation, like rejection and criticism, is the external reflection of internal resistance. The external reflection of internal resistance. Right. So, like, let's say something happens to me and maybe I'm in a social setting um, and somebody says something or points something out about me that I find embarrassing. Um, I can sit there and get wrapped up in my head about it or I can choose to just own it and say, oh, yeah, that happened, blah, 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 and then let it go. Um, because um, just like with resistance, a lot of our our emotional turmoil, um, some some of it we can perpetuate ourselves. So um, if that makes any sense. So Kim's saying the difference between who I am and who I want to be is what I do. I like that. The difference between who I am and who I want to be is what I do, the actions I take. I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Your core is bulletproof. And Zondra says that is a damn good quote. I'll agree to that. Yeah, yeah. So, again, <laughs> just got this example. I don't know what this means. The professional keeps his eye on the donut and not on the hole. <laughs> ah, so don't, uh, don't, uh, I guess obsess over what's not there. I don't know. It's better to be in the arena getting stomped by the bull than to be up in the stands or out in the parking lot. Shit. <sighs> Trying to call me into work. You guys, my mom is setting up Christmas lights today. And last year I helped her and she's doing it without me. So I got to go check on her after this. This is just a random side note here. So Zondra says, that's an old song, one of my favorites. Look at the donut and not the hole. I didn't even know that was a song or like a pop culture reference. <laughs> I'm really glad you pointed that out because now I'm going to have to go look it up. Look at the donut and not the hole. I like it. So a professional self-validates. An amateur lets the negative opinion of others unman him. He takes external criticism to heart, allowing it to trump his own belief in himself and his work. Right. We don't want to do that. So a professional is tough mindedness at a level most of us can't comprehend, let alone emulate. Well, that's not very promising, Stephen. I think it's baby steps to getting there, right? Tough-mindedness at a level most of us can't comprehend, let alone emulate. Um, so let's look more closely, right? So not acting reflexively, controlling your reaction, and governing your emotion. Again, this is another Tiger Woods thing. So a Tiger Woods example. So the story was that Tiger had his, his swing up, and somebody took a photo, and it distracted him, and he was able to make the shot anyway. Um, so... So not reacting for reflexively, you know, he could have gotten mad at the person who took the photo. He, but Tiger instead controlled his reaction and governed his emotion. And he didn't take it personally. He could have reacted with outrage or indignation or cast himself as a victim, but he didn't. He didn't take it as a sign of heaven's malevolence. You know, he maintained his sovereignty over the moment. And he himself still had his job to do, which was hitting that dang golf ball, guys. So he knew that it remained within his power to produce the shot. So he he uh, steeled himself against the distractions and he, he did his job, right? So he knew that it remained within his power to take that shot. He recomposed himself, returned to the task at hand. The professional cannot allow the actions of others to define your reality. And I think we find this in our everyday daily lives, like, um, I have a friend who will often say, oh, such and such happened and it ruined my whole day. 
and I'm not allowed to speak like that. Um, and I say that because um, I've, again, I think I was talking about this last week where um, I'll, I'll talk to my mom and I'll be like, uh, you know, I've, I've steered, I've stopped for the most part saying, oh, he did this and it made me feel. Oh, she did this and it made me feel. And my mom will look at me and say, made you? Or did you let it, right? So allowing things that happen to ruin the rest of our day. Um, I mean, and it's it's it takes work to get to a point to where we can recenter ourselves and everybody's in a different place. But ultimately, that's my goal, right? Like not allowing other people to ruin my day, not allowing things that are out of my control that other people are doing to ruin my day. Like I still have a job to do. I still have my artwork to make. I still have my business to run. I still have to show up here on Sundays and read the books. You know, I, I have set these things that I've committed myself to doing and regardless of how I'm feeling, I have to do it. So Zandra says the song is Burl Ives, the donut song. And she says, oh, and regarding what I was talking about, the story is like a higher stakes high school problem. I feel like I heard this advice from teachers all the time. And then uh, Kim says, don't give them the mental real estate. Exactly. Like, uh, that's another one. Don't let them live in your head rent free. And Zondra says, again, that you made me mentality is so high school. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're not, we're not there anymore. You know, like, you didn't make me do shit. I chose to say this. I chose to do that. I allowed myself to feel. I knowingly, you know, such and such, right? So, again, it's about mental uh, mental dexterity, presence, presence, I don't know. Being mindful, um, taking that deep breath. You know, sometimes you just need to take a big deep breath, reset. All right, so don't freak out, stay professional. You know, you can control your actions, right? So nothing matters but that we keep working. The professional shows up ready to serve the gods. I love it. <laughs> uh, so the professional learns to recognize envy driven criticism. Ooh, that one can cut. And to take it for what it is, the supreme compliment. The critic hates most that which he would have done himself had he had the guts, right? So it's again like, are you showing up and doing the work or are you just saying, oh, I could do that? You know, I mean, I've experienced this recently, right? Where I'm just like, oh man, like this person's doing such and such. I really want to do that. And it's like, okay, well, like I haven't carved the time out to do it. So like, you can't be like hating on anybody else because you didn't take the action, right? Zondra says, word, 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 bird, 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 bird's the word. So a professional recognizes her limitations. And I find it interesting how Stephen Pressfield goes between he and she in this book because it, it's not like a, I don't know, I think it's very interesting how he subscribes to the masculine and feminine things. Of course, he's like an older gentleman and, you know, it's ingrained, but, you know, now I'm here I am. Okay, we'll, we'll drop that. <laughs> okay, a professional recognizes her limitations, their limitations, really. So, you know that only you can be a professional. Wait, hold on. A professional recognizes her limitations. She knows that she can only be a professional at one thing. She brings in other pros and treats them with respect. So, again, that speaks to me about... Um, delegating tasks, hiring out your excess work. Um, um, and really, like, I guess he's saying stay in your damn lane. And Zondra says, I mean, he does go pretty fairly go back and forth. Yeah, no, so I've noticed he goes back and forth, but I haven't been able to differentiate, like, like, are you doing this because you think this is a feminine attribute or are you doing this because you think it's a masculine? Or is he really just trying to shuffle the deck in – and go through <laughs> yeah. and go go back and forth and try and be even about it. I don't know. I'm really not sure. I, I'm hard, I find it hard to believe that it's not biased in any way, especially since, I don't know. 
I think we all can be biased in any way. I don't, I don't know why I'm pointing that out. Um, all right, Kim, BS, a professional can do everything. You know what? You get it, girl. Okay, because I do my own accounting. I do my bookkeeping. I do my – I plan on doing marketing. <laughs> Uh, it's just hard to do a lot, but yeah, Kim's saying BS, and you know, I'm I'm with there. I'm with you too. Um, I like to do everything myself. Zondra says this one hit home with me. I was taught I should know how to do everything before I hire it out, but it's just not possible. It's destructive. Yeah. So like for me, um, like I'm waiting to do. Like I need to just like take time and do my um, do my marketing plan but like anytime I sit down and do my marketing plan I get it like 90% done and I'm just like I'm not doing this so it, for me I'm like okay like I know how to do it but it would be nice for me to just hire it out because I have so much other shit I'm doing so I feel you Zandra and I feel you also Kim because I also do try to do everything myself so I think maybe what this is speaking to we're seeing both sides of this is if it's unmanageable to you you know, find somebody to help you. Like, you can even get, like, an assistant or, like, an intern, right? Um, so, Zondra says, rich people hire nannies so they don't have to waste valuable time making sandwiches. Artists need to do the same. <laughs> you know what, you guys? I'm going to call it. I agree with Kim and I agree with Zondra, and I think maybe it just boils down to personal preference. Also, I do agree with the book in a way to where it's, like, if there's something that's, like, a one-off, especially... You choose to learn that instead of hiring it out, right? Like, so that's that's got to be a cognizant choice. Maybe that's the moral of the story here. You need to pick your battles. Pick your battles. If if you are struggling with something and it's not necessarily your profession, then sure, hire it out. But if there's something that you're capable of doing and it's going to save you some money, but maybe not necessarily some time, um, pick your battles, guys. I don't know. I'm leaving this one up to you. You guys are... You guys are both on opposite ends of the spectrum, and I, I see the middle ground. I see both. I see how both apply. So I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so Zandra says, it's good to know, but not always to execute everything yourself, right? And then Zandra says, I like that. Pick your battles. Yeah, what hill are you going to die on, right? So Kim says, you can do, but you can, you can do, but you can delegate to save your stress. Ooh. Boom. Look at this. We found, we found a nice, happy medium. Proud of y'all. Yeah. I like it. A professional reinvents himself. As artists, we serve our muse, our internal inspiration. Kim says, common ground, right? We can all play together. It's fine. We have common ground. <laughs> <laughs> As artists, we serve the muse, and the muse may have more than one job for us over our lifetime. You can shuck your outworn body and don a new one. You continue your journey. So it's saying the professional does not permit himself to become hidebound within one incarnation, however comfortable or successful. Like a transmigrating soul, he shucks his outworn body and dons a new one. He continues his journey. I freaking love how literary he gets in this. So the hundred saying ground of common. <laughs> yeah. So, so what this speaks to me is I have multiple creative interests. Um, I've recently been focusing on painting specifically. I also do photography and things like that. And I think it's really important to allow ourselves to, to change and evolve. Um, yeah, so adding things in, subtracting, you know, maybe maybe change is a good thing, right? So Kim says, I love being common. <laughs> you guys are cute. The ground of commons, common ground. I love being okay. I like being um myself. I don't have to be any what is it that uh don't don't try to be anybody else. Everybody else is taken. Zondra says reinvention is good. Yeah. Fresh spins on things. That's what's really cool about taking workshops and learning new skills is like 
you know, you never know how it's going to inspire you to incorporate it. Learning is so, so fun like that. So professionals recognized by other professionals. The professional senses who has served his time and who hasn't. <laughs> uh, right. So, you know, Zondra says, the thing is, evolution is natural. If you don't reinvent, eventually you aren't even being yourself anymore. I like that. Yeah, so it's like um, the people you surround yourself with, if they encourage you to grow, it's going to be really fruitful and you're going to be able to to evolve um, and be supported. And um, whereas if the people you surround yourself with just want to do the same things over and over, not only is it boring, but you are you can become stagnant and less likely to grow. Um, I like that, Zondra. You can be a shell of yourself. So Zondra's saying eventually you aren't even being yourself anymore. So I think it's like he's even likening it to being a husk. You shuck your outworn body, right? And Zondra says, I like the gun sees another gun. It feels real. Oh, so like Alan Ladd and Jack Plant circling each other in Shane, a gun recognizes another gun. Yeah, and I think that's true. Um, you, you can hold yourself differently. Um, I mean, I think that there's definitely something that serving your time, learning a profession and, and growing a business, uh, it definitely changes you. Um, and... Uh, it's like what they say. Um, I had somebody say this to me and it's a very not nice way to say it. Um, it's a very not nice way to say it. Uh, but they said to me, um, entrepreneurs are just stupid enough to believe that they'll succeed. And that's why I think it was something like the average successful, I think it's like a successful self-made millionaires or entrepreneurs has started like an average of, it was some crazy number, like seven to 20 businesses or something like that. Um, I don't remember the specific number, but yeah. So uh, you just have to like, it's like you just have to keep moving forward and growing and believing in yourself and learning and, and paying your dues, right? There's no overnight success. No, it doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. We're led to believe that there's an overnight success, but you're missing the years and years and years of work that somebody's put in, right? So you, Inc., you incorporated, which I really like this, making yourself a corporation or just thinking of yourself in that way reinforces the idea of professionalism because it separates the artists doing the work from the will and consciousness running the show. I have one of those meetings with myself every Monday. I sit down and I go over my assignments and then I type it up and I distribute it to myself. Okay, so so he's talking about um, having your uh, meetings at work every single Monday when your boss is like delegating all the tasks and Steven's saying that he has a meeting with himself every Monday to where he's like, okay, here's what my week is gonna look like, here's the tasks I need to do, which I really like. And He's seeing he has different credit cards and different accounts for his corporation. Um, and he says, if you are thinking of yourself as a business, you price your wares more realistically. Um, you can be a little bit too mild mannered and to go out and sell. But if you make yourself into a business, you can pimp, pimp yourself out. You're not me anymore. You're you, the company. So Zandra saying, wow, whoever said that was a jerk. Yeah. Well, it's just like something that's like super rude to say. <laughs> like you're just stupid enough to believe in yourself. <laughs> but it's kind of in a way, like if you think of it as like, you know, you do believe in yourself and it's kind of like you are blindly going through it all. Like nobody, like you can get manuals and, and structures for how to run businesses. But if you're doing something like new um, or you want to be innovative, like a lot of times there's not, you know, a a real path for success for a lot of this stuff. So 
Um, Sandra says, you ink is good, and that she kind of realizes that she does you ink unconsciously, which is super awesome. That means that you have some really cool skills in your belt where you can be objective. So um, it sounds like you're already doing a lot of what we're even talking about today. Um, yeah. A critter that keeps coming. Resistance is a bully. Resistance has no strength of its own. Its power derives entirely from our fear of it. A bully will back down before the runtiest twerp who stands his ground. So they're just full hot air, right? You stand up to somebody who's trying to throw their weight around, and for the most part, they're going to back down because nobody stands up to them because they're just, that's, that, that's what works for them. Um, focus upon the work and its demands while we're doing it to the exclusion of all else. So when you're at work, you're working. That's why I put my phone on silent. Do not disturb. Like I'm not, I'm working right now. Focus upon, oh, if you did your work, no force on earth could stand against you. I like that. Somebody once told me, um, in one of my trainings I was working on, they said, uh, if you just don't give up, there's no way you'll ever fail. Um, and this was for a particular field in which I was studying, but I, I think it's really nice. Um, if you believe in yourself and you continue to show up and do the work, like really like you've got a leg up on a lot of the, the people that desire to do that just because you're willing to show up and do the work. So the pros keep coming on. The pros don't give up. All right, you guys, this is the last page. No mystery. There's no mystery to turning pro. It's a decision brought about by an act of will. We make up our mind to view ourselves as pros, and then we do it. It's as simple as that. All you have to do is decide. Decide that you're a professional. Zandra has already decided that she's a professional. Kim is a professional. I'm a professional. We're going to show up. We're going to do the work. We're going to continue on this track, right? Keep making for the love of it. You love it. That's why you're doing it. Don't give up on yourself. Right? All right. So pages for next week. So now we're into book three which is beyond resistance, the higher realm. Some of y'all live in states where marijuana is legal and you can go into the higher realm whenever you want, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about deciding to show up for ourselves, go beyond resistance into that higher realm of professionalism. Okay, Zondra's saying booyah. Page 121. All right, so we're going to read pages 105 to 121. I like letting you guys pick the pages. I don't mind. Zondra says, it is less pages, about 15, so we can chat and meander more if we want. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, that is a little bit less pages. Are you sure, Zandra? Are you sure you don't want to go all the way to page 127? Kim says, I will not be here next week. I'm doing a sip and sell at the brewery here in town. Ooh. Well, Kim, that's okay. Read the pages and tune in after. Um, and you can throw in your commentary after if you want. Um, we'd still love to hear from you. All right, so since you're not going to be here, we'll do, okay, okay, I'll let Zondra win. So we'll do pages 105 to page 121. Also, congratulations, Kim. I'm super excited. Um, I have been, I've got this bug in the back of my head to where I'm like, oh, man, my art's been at the same place since February. I should probably do my rotating art shows, and it's in the back of my head. So I definitely admire you for continuing to do these these projects in these these open houses, Kim. Um, I'm really happy for you. Um, and if you missed it, Kim posted her trip to pain, trip to pan, her three piece 
commission of her stained glass in our Facebook page or our Facebook group, which is uh, Creative Club with Sari Luna on Facebook. So go check that out. Um, so Zandra says there's 65 pages left and she broke them down to roughly 15 page sections, but I won't complain. Okay, Zandra, we'll go with your thing. You already did the work. Um, we'll do the, we'll do the 15 page sections. Like Zandra said, Zandra says I is nerd. <laughs> All right. Kim says she will read and she'll show up after she gets home. The show is from 12 to five. Well, I'm sure it's going to go well, Kim. I'm really happy for you. And I'd love to see pictures too. And Zandra says, Oh snap. I'll have to check it out. All right, you guys, we are exactly at an hour here. I'm going to go. I have art fun things to do. So thank you again for joining me. Thanks for the heads up, Kim. And we'll see you in a couple weeks, Kim. And I'll see you next week, Zandra. And have a happy, magical, creative day. Bye.